view it TV subscribers, followers, and viewers, welcome back to the channel for another video we're doing today uh, regarding some new products we're going to be using on the channel right here at Review It TV. Today we're going to go ahead and talk about uh, two different products actually. We're going to start with the EOS M50 Mark II made by Canon. Uh, this is a mirrorless camera. We're going to be using this camera throughout some of our future videos here. We've been using some standard DSLR and we went from like an HD camera to DSLR. Now we're going to start using some mirrorless on the channel. Um, and you've probably seen like right here, for example, what it's like filming without a gimbal. So today we're going to go ahead and film with this gimbal right here. And we're actually going to set it up, um, install the M50 onto it, get it all balanced and ready to use. And then we'll give you guys some examples of the actually in use filming uh, some different, you know, examples of places and things you would use a gimbal on to help you get that real sturdy like footage that you're looking for. Um, we're also going to show you some other products over here um, that we want to add to this setup uh, just to help improve the performance of it. Um, we do have a Ronin S focus wheel made by DJI. Uh, DJI has also made this gimbal that we're going to be using today. Um, we also have a Movo um, external microphone with a little like shock uh, absorber mount for it. So we're going to go ahead and try to use that today. Um, that's what's in this bag right here. We're going to get this M50 and go over just a few basic features. This isn't really a tutorial specifically on this or the actual gimbal. Um, we just want to kind of put it together, test it out, and then show you guys some possibilities um, of things you may have to add or change to make the, cap the compatibility of this camera to the gimbal work correctly. I know that if you go to the DJI website in order to uh, look up the compatibility list for cameras that will work with the DJI Ronin SC gimbal, is that's what we're going to be showing you, and that's exactly what this gimbal is. Um, is uh, a compatibility list of cameras that actually will go and plug into this gimbal because you're not only going to be using the gimbal for straight shots and sturdiness but you're also uh, going to be plugging your camera directly into the gimbal to utilize some um, functionalities that come on this gimbal itself like controlling the uh, record movie mode being able to move the actual gimbal with a joystick that's what's in this box here so we're going to go ahead and uh, get down to pulling some of the products out of the DJI box, show you guys the camera, we'll get it all balanced and installed and we'll talk about, like I said, uh, some of the possibilities of maybe some issues getting it set up with this specific gimbal. Okay, so if you look at the box, nice box, sturdy, made of styrofoam, hard styrofoam case, um, looks like you have some latches here, nice handle, uh, so you can just kind of open this up as so. And then this is how your gear is going to come. Uh, this is all of the contents that come in this. So let's just go over this briefly and then I'll go ahead and throw it together and then we'll get this camera started. Comes with your, your uh, general direction pamphlets and instructions, warranty cards, and so on. Um, sometimes watching videos like this one might be a little bit easier understanding how to use this right away than trying to read all the pages. But just keep in mind this book isn't that thick. There's a lot of different languages. So there's just small sections about details on this gimbal, but we'll go ahead and show you today. So you have your main gimbal right here with the control um, panel, and then you have your gimbal with the motors. Uh, you have like your tilt, roll, and pan motor that come on this particular gimbal. It's a three axis gimbal. Uh, it is going to have a handle for holding it, and it also turns into a tripod for your tripod used to mount the gimbal on, then you can go ahead and set it down and use like so on. Uh, it does have a riser plate right here, so you do get a riser plate. Um, it comes with a cool little uh, phone mounting uh, bracket, so you can kind of mount your phone on the side of it. If you're gonna hook your phone up for the app use that comes on this, or if you're wanting to look at uh, some different footages and things while you're using the gimbal, um, there's several different uses for wanting to have your phone hooked up. Um, I did go ahead and add a couple little things to this uh, gimbal that I bought online on Amazon, a couple little extra things. And I'm going to show you guys why, because for this specific Canon M50 Mark II camera, um, it is compatible and it does hook up to this thing correctly. But the wire and where it mounts, because this camera 
this specific smaller camera, they put the actual HDMI and connection ports on the side, on the right side, which kind of gets right up against this motor. So trying to plug those wires in and coming, uh, having them come out near this motor makes it difficult and almost impossible to plug in without getting a couple little adapters, which are only about seven or eight bucks. Um, the last camera I used, which was the T7 DSLR camera, had them on this side which would make it perfect without any obstructions. But since they put them on this side, which isn't Canon's fault or DJI, I'm sure they didn't call each other up when they were making their product to find out if their things were gonna be completely com uh, compatible with the cords having clearance and not. But we'll get into that and show you guys that because that's an important thing that you're gonna want to know when you're purchasing this particular setup. Because if not, you're gonna get it in and then you're gonna get it ready to set up and you're gonna have issues getting it connected and you're going to be upset. So this is kind of some cool little tips to know about. <clears throat> it does come with some hardware. Um, has different screws and stuff that you put into the mounting bracket or the riser. I did put a coin in here because that's what I used to turn these screws. So like I said, this isn't, I didn't just open this box. I opened it and kind of went through stuff. And I always do that before I do a video, guys. It kind of makes sense to more or less make sure the product works before you have to end up shipping it back than to set it all up, uh, you know, a month later when you go do your video and find out it doesn't work and then don't have enough time to return it anymore. So I go through my products right away to make sure that they are uh, com completely working condition before I do any of my videos. So yeah, so you have some little brackets and bolts, you got some little handle stuff, you have like this little riser, and I don't know what I did with it, it's probably around here somewhere, I'll find it guys, we'll show it to you, but it's just a little riser, um, like it's kind of like a shape of a Y and it holds your lens up, gives it more support. Um, it also comes with the quick release mounting plate which is probably different than the Ronin S, a little bit different style. Um, it's kind of smaller than the original Ronin S, apparently. Uh, it comes with three different cables here. So you have a USB to micro USB, which is for charging the gimbal. So this is what you'll plug into there. You'll plug it into a little uh, outlet box and then plug it into your outlet. Keep in mind, guys, it doesn't come with a plug. You do need to get a plug and make sure that the specific ratings for the plug match the voltage and stuff that this particular gimbal uses because you don't want to charge it you'll notice the plug getting real hot and the battery will take forever to charge it does come with a second cable um, this is the type c and the type c is on both ends this is the one you're actually going to use to plug in your camera to the gimbal because the gimbal has a port where you plug this in then you plug it into your camera so you can use the control functions for recording and stuff on the gimbal instead of having to touch the camera while you're moving the gimbal around. Um, so if you're like thinking to yourself, oh great, I don't have a Type-C, and if you see what a Type-C is, if you look closely, you can see right there that it's kind of like these newer, more oval shaped plugs. And they're, uh, they're being used a lot more on cell phones and everything than the micro. The micro USB, is uh, this little adapter and it comes with this particular Ronin SC and DJI gives it to you. And that's for the micro <clears throat> USB port, which is probably what's on all of your cameras and some of your older cell phones. So you can use that to put that on there and then that way it'll still plug into your device. So that's kind of good to know with the, the three cables that come with this device. So um, it also comes with the battery, which is also the hand mount to hold it but that's going to plug in and then you'll be able to charge this guy directly from the outlet to the gimbal while it's just sitting there ready, waiting to be used. So let's go ahead and get ready to put this together. Okay guys, so here is that little tiny lens support uh, bracket I was showing you that would go on the front of this to hold a bigger or heavier, longer lens up. So that was what I was looking for. It was just in that little slot kind of camouflage. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get this set up. Take your gimbal, the main part of it out first. It has all your access motors. It also has your ports for charging on the back. Um, this is the focus wheel I actually ordered separate. Depending on if you get like the complete kit, I guess they call it or whatever, it'll either come with the focus wheel or not. Um, your standard DSLRs, a lot of them won't be compatible um, because of the plugs and stuff and the software that's on these older DSLR cameras. Uh, for this focus wheel, but the M50 and the M52 both are compatible, so it works out great for doing fine focusing if you don't like the autofocus function that you're using. So, <clears throat> what you do is you get your battery, 
and then it, you can see that it slides on there simply like that and then there's a locking switch right there so what we do is we just take that and we slide it on there like so you're just going to gently pull the lock over notice that the lock switch doesn't come all the way up so don't force it over that's how it works that's how it mounts so that's the first part just like that Next is your tripod, which screws onto the bottom there. You have two different size holes that you can use depending on if you have a different tripod maybe you want to use other than this. So it gives you different options for mounting that. But this is just going to go right in there like so. So that's how you get the basic setup going right there. So as you guys can see right there, we have the, the whole thing put together. Now what we do is we just take the tripod part out and bam. Look at how nice that uh, actually looks. It just looks real well built. It feels really well built, guys. This thing is like tough. And you know what, it came out two years ago. So this isn't like a brand new um, gimbal coming right out, but it's the most relevant one for these types of mirrorless cameras right now that's out. Uh, that's probably a matter of opinion, but for this particular Ronin series, this is the most recent one that they've dropped out. Um, and uh, it's really well built. Um, the cool thing about this one is it has these locking switches on here. And uh, if you look real close, you can see them right there. But these switches are on either one of the motors. And you have your tilt motor, which is this top one. Then you have the roll motor. And then you have down here the pan motor. And each one of those has that lock on it. Um, this particular little device right here is actually something that came with the Ronin and it was in the box but I found it to be useful because you can actually put this on here and most people probably thought this was just for that cell phone mount which it is you can actually mount it on like that and then put your cell phone on and that's how you would use your cell phone if you were going to actually put this on like so um, but if you're not going to use your cell phone, you can take this mounting device off and actually put an external microphone um, on here or you can put on top of the camera like normally people would mount the little tiny external microphones on top of the camera. Um, depending on the shot you're going to take because of the way this would angle holding it down that external microphone might bump into the top of the gimbal when you're putting the camera down in a real low position because it has to roll as it goes through the gimbal access areas. Uh, so that's something to consider whether you want to mount it here or up there depending on the shots you're going to be doing but it gives you that option to go ahead and make a couple different choices. So. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get the riser and the quick release plate put onto the camera because that's the way that this uh, particular camera is going to be set up to get everything on here and functioning. So there's two different ways you guys can do this. When you're actually mounting the camera on there, typically what you're going to do is you're just going to take your uh, quick release plate, you're going to put it on the bottom of your camera, mount it, and then it's going to mount up here in this particular slide. It'll slide in and then it'll lock in place. Most people don't need the riser plate unless they have a really big lens on the camera to give the lens clearance because the lens may exceed this width of the area and come down too far and actually not have enough room without hitting that riser or that plate. So the riser plate gives it a gap to give more room for the lens. Um, if you don't use the riser plate with the quick release plate, what happens is, is the little door that's on the bottom of this camera will actually be covered up just enough by the quick release plate that when you go to open this, it will hit it and it won't allow you to be able to open the door enough to get your battery swapped out and the uh, micro SD card goes in the same area. So what, essentially what happens is if you don't um, put that riser plate on, Every time you want to take out your battery or switch out the memory card, you have to take this off. And then when you go to put it back on, you're going to have to rebalance it, put it on the gimbal and rebalance all the access points on the gimbal, which could take forever and really slow things down. So I found out upon putting this on here that if I used the riser plate on the quick release plate and then put it on the camera, it actually gets the camera up off the plate enough to open this completely, get the battery out and get the um, memory card out without having to remove any of this every time which makes it a lot faster because if I'm using the gimbal for that complete video I'm um, chances are I'm not gonna remove this till I'm done if I'm not gonna use the gimbal on my next video notice on the bottom of that camera too and I know we're going back and forth but this setup 
has a uh, adapter to where you can have these batteries that you put in there. You plug in your cord into the battery and then plug it into the wall so you don't have to use your batteries. You can just draw power right from the outlet, saving you from swapping the battery out period in between longer scenes. So let's go back to the gimbal <clears throat> and let's show you what happens when I unlock some of these um, locks that are on the uh, motors here. So we've got the roll motor right here. And see, that gives the roll motor access. Then I have the tilt, which is this motor right here. And if you look on the back, right there, there's the tilt motor lock. Now that gives the roll and the tilt motor both um, access to move. The last one is your pan motor, which is the big motor. It's like the main mount. That's on the bottom right here. So if you unlock that, now your whole gimbal is ready to go ahead and start getting um, put into a position for balancing. So with that being said, let's move this to the side for a second and let's go ahead and get a coin out and get this um, mount done, <clears throat> the, the quick release plate, and let's get the riser done. So that way we can actually put on the gimbal and get the gimbal balanced. That way we can start playing with it and I can show you the compatibility um, small issue that there is with trying to get the cables ran into this thing correctly because if not then you're not able to use the uh, the record buttons and some of the other functions on here you'll only be able to just use the gimbal in general so that's a cool thing though is if you guys do happen to have some older ca uh, cameras and you want this gimbal anyways because you like some of the functions you can still use the control um, switch here to move the, ca the gimbal around and then it'll automatically balance between moving back and forth, up and down, uh, horizontally, or whatnot, um, without having the compatibility of using the record button switch here versus pushing it on your actual camera. So, what we do is we take the camera, we're gonna turn it over here, <clears throat> and what I recommend for this particular camera, um, if you look at this, it says l uh, lens. So basically, you're gonna wanna mount this like so, and you want this side facing towards the lens. So what you want to put on there first is your riser plate because the riser plate is what's going to rise the camera up a little bit from the actual quick release plate, thus giving you um, room to move your battery out like I mentioned. So let me get the little coin. Guys, a coin is the easiest way to do this. Just use a nickel, um, fits perfect in this screw. And you can just turn it like so. Let's hold it in place. There's no real way that this sits except for <clears throat> you want the longer uh, width of the um, riser plate to be going in the general direction of the lens, not the actual width of the camera. <clears throat> so that's how that sits. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the riser plate on here. And as you can see on this riser plate, if you look closely, there's light to heavy. So depending on the weight of the camera is where you're gonna actually move this quick release on the riser. If it's more heavy, you're gonna to wanna to put it this way. If it's lighter, you're gonna to wanna to more or less put it in the middle somewhere. <clears throat> There's no real way to honestly tell right at first, but other than to put it together and just try it. So with these screws, notice that if you don't, if you just try pushing the screw in here, it's not gonna work. So if you're trying to get them in and you're thinking, oh, this screw doesn't fit, well, it's because at the top, it's like a beveled extended part of the rail here. It turns into like a hole shape at the very top up there. So what you have to do is, and it actually has threads in that little hole there, which might be hard to see, but if you look closely in there, there's some threads and that's where this little screw is going to thread in there like so. And I know that takes just a second, but once you screw it in, it's gonna drop down into the rail like that. And then there it goes. Oops, excuse me, drop that, but here we go with the second one. So you're gonna to wanna to use two of them for the riser plate, because the riser plate actually has two holes for screws, and there it is. So don't forget, where it says the lens, you want that facing, and like I said, just use this as your marking spot for the center. You want it to be about center, which on this camera almost gives it to be flush with the lens anyway. So if you're more or less in that area, then that's where you're gonna to wanna to mount this. What you do is you take one of your screws and you slide it up into the first hole and just barely start it. Then take your second one and you can lift it up and get it right into the second hole, which can be a little bit tricky guys, just take your time. And then there, now you can move this back and forth. And like I said, light to heavy, I would say we wanna do it right about this first screw, right about in the middle, like so, about right there. <clears throat> and you're gonna just tighten that down with your nickel. 
I like doing these product reviews, guys. I don't do a lot of them, but when I do, I try to make them something a little bit relevant, whether or not it's been out or it's brand new or what. Uh, it doesn't really make a difference to me because everyone explains it differently and might find different things about it that others didn't explain in their videos. So it's kind of cool to do one a little bit later to find out what the flaws are and what the compatibility issues may be from one camera to the next than to try to shove it down your throat the day it comes out and really have no time to uh, play around with the product to see what it can actually do and what it'll what it'll work with and what it won't. So that's how you get the riser plate on. So now you can see the riser plate and the um, quick release plate are both on. The cool thing about this quick release plate is that it has this little screw dial. <clears throat> what you do is you loosen it. Once you put it on the camera and you figure out where it's balanced, more or less, you lock it in place and then you set that screw, that set screw up there to be flush to where it's actually the camera's gonna sit uh, from now on. So every time you take that out to put it away, you can just slide it in and it'll go right up to that set screw and that's where you know it needs to be set and tied into place and locked down each time so you don't have to try to reset this. So what we're gonna do is on your tilt motor up here, you can see there's a mount already on this guy. Um, and there's actually a screw down here, a little handle, and this is what kind of tightens this quick release plate in the place on the gimbal. So if you don't have this loosen, loosen it up guys. Now what you're going to do is see these rails, they're going to fit on the grooves here. As you can see there's like these two rib ripped grooves here. They're going to go right up in here into that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to slide this on. And I already set this one um, for this camera so I'm going to leave it set there. But once you get it set in place guys and you figure out where you're going to move your camera because when you, in order to get it balanced you can see how the camera wants to move that way. Well you want it to stay in one position. So <clears throat> once you get, and actually let me show you guys, I'll take this back off. Because there's two different ways. You can put it on and then set your gimbal up or you can kind of get your gimbal locked in place. So you're going to take your tilt roll and pan motors and lock them like this. There's three of them until it locks generally like that. So you can see how this sits guys. Take a good look at that. You want yours to be locked into place just like that so none of these are moving. Makes it a little bit easier to go ahead and then slide this back on there. So there it is. Now you're going to want to tighten this bottom switch because that's what locks this rail into place. If you don't tighten it and you forget, what's going to happen is, is you guys are going to go to pick up the gimbal and this camera is going to just roll and slide right off the gimbal and hit the floor. And uh, that could be a nightmare scenario. So there it is. It's actually mounted for the first time. Um, what I want to do is uh, I'm going to put some accessories. Like I said, I have this particular external mic I'm going to be using. This isn't the actual one, sorry guys, uh, that I normally use. I just ordered this one in. I got it for some uh, rewards points I had, so I decided what the heck I'll use it and get this little microphone. So this little Movo <clears throat> shotgun microphone I believe is what they are considered. Comes with a little shock absorbing bracket and then it comes with a dead cat. A little furry dead cat that goes on it to keep uh, the wind from making sounds into your microphone as you're moving around in windy uh, areas. So <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and what you want to do is when you're doing all of this, you want to mount whatever you're going to get on this camera and use and get it balanced with the camera then and there. <clears throat> you don't want to balance your camera and put it on and then start adding other things onto the camera because then it's not balanced right and it won't function correctly. So here's this little shotgun microphone and you see it has a little dead cat that just slides on over it and that keeps the wind. Little furry thing. Here's your little shock absorber bracket. It's just gonna sit right over the top of this. Then it comes with two different cables. You have one with kind of like a tension slinky cord to it, almost like your old phone cords. Then it has a straight one too. Uh, for your uh, microphone cables and this one goes to your smartphone actually so you have the one that goes to your camera and they throw in an extra one to use this microphone on your smartphones too which is cool because if you don't want to use your camera or your DSLR cameras or whatever you're using and you are one of those people that film with just your smartphones if you happen to be looking for a mic and you run into this video well there you, you know it'll work so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this on top of the camera here you can see it just slides on and you just take this little tension wheel, like so. Once you slide it on, you just kind of lock this wheel down in place. That'll keep it from coming off. Then I've found, guys, that when I'm mounting this cable on this particular setup with this gimbal, 
Um, there's ways to get your cabling set up and ran so it's not all over and sticking out and obstructing the gimbal when it's moving. If you take this cable, you're going to want the L-shaped end to actually plug onto the side of your camera. So this little tiny area, this compartment, has a little door for your external microphone on the M52. Uh, I'm not going to do anything about the M51 because I never got one of those, so there's nothing for me to really compare it to. But I am going to say to you guys watching, because of how uh, similar these cameras are, besides some of the functionalities, and I don't know if the external mic was a problem from the M51 to now, but if you do have the M52, it does fit. So you can see there's your microphone. And if you see the way I ran the cable through the actual shock absorber, because this shock absorber compared to our Rogue mic, it just seems like a hard piece of plastic. It still does the job fine for this small setup, but it doesn't actually move around like the shock absorbers truly do. So I kind of use it just to hold the cable. And if you see, I got it going through the middle, coming out like that with just a little bit of slack and it holds it, gives it a clean, sturdy look without letting it come down and obstruct your view of your camera. So that's the first thing that we wanted to put on here. So guys, here's the important thing that I'm gonna talk about. We've already covered the riser issue because now you're able to take this camera off and I'll take it off real quick and show you what I mean about the battery with this and the card being able to be done real fast. Is if you look right here, <clears throat> there's the door. And before I was showing you the door would hit, well in this case, there it is. I can take the battery, put it right in there, the door opens up all the way enough to put the card in there. If I take that riser off the quick release plate and just put the plate on there, it's not going to open. So keep that in mind. But now that we got that done, lock that back in place and we're going to talk about the cables. Because the cables uh, for this particular camera, and you can see the area that I'm talking about here, um, there was a little bit of a compatibility problem regarding the cables and the room that this camera needs in order to get that into the side of the camera, thus not hitting the motor over here and catching up and crimping your cables too tight on the camera. So this is an issue with this particular setup in the M150. Uh, the M50 number one, I should say, whatever. I don't have it, but yeah. So um, if you're using this camera, what you're gonna find is that they send you an adapter. And because this camera, being even though it's still new within the last six months coming out, um, it doesn't have the type C connection on here. So you can't just use the type C that comes with the DJI Ronin SC in that box because both ends are the type C. So they give you this adapter with the micro USB and the adapter for the type C to go into. So that's great, right? But look, now it makes it even longer. So now you're really not gonna be able to get this cable in between here such as so. And that makes the compatibility issue a slight problem, guys, because when you read the book, it just says the type and model of this camera that it's compatible. It doesn't say that you'll need um, a, a adapter or anything third party other than what came in the box to be able to use this camera if you want to be able to plug it in and use the focus wheel, use the joystick, and use the manual record button uh, for pictures and movie videos or whatever videos um, right off the Ronin SC itself. So now here's the option. All right guys, so <clears throat> the 90 degree micro USB to um, S is uh, what you want. And, and that's gonna be, and actually this is a micro USB, 90 degree angle to micro USB. Because if you had one that was just an actual type C on this side and micro USB, you'd be able to use it right to the cable. But since I didn't get that one and I got one that's a micro USB to micro USB 90 degree angle adapter, I have to use the DJI adapter that comes with it. So what I do is I first take the DJI adapter that has the type C to micro USB and I stick it over the end of the type C with the straight end, not the L shaped end. Then what I have to do is I need to take this adapter and plug it into this other adapter like so. Then what we have is the shape of the adapters all sitting like this. So if you look up here, that's where we're going to have room to be able to actually make this work now. Uh, so I'll go ahead and just open this up and plug it in and kind of show you what it's going to look like. So you're going to just take this, guys, and uh, put it up onto the camera. Get it plugged in. It's going to sit in there just like so. Then you're going to take it and plug it right down here, if you guys want to look in closely. 
uh, to this particular port there. So this will come down and it'll actually plug in just like that. And as you can see, it comes up, goes up over the top and then plugs into the adapter. Doesn't give you a whole lot of room. What I found to be useful <clears throat> is, and this is just a home remedy myself, is I kind of don't like the way this sits. So what I did is I ordered another 90 degree um, adapter that will be USB type C or it'll be U it'll be type C on the bottom to micro USB so I don't have to use the DJI adapter to make this cable go up so tall. I don't like how it has to have two different adapters before it plugs into the actual cable. So if I get the 90 degree angle with the type C on the bottom here and the micro USB going into the camera here then I can eliminate that DJI adapter thus giving me a little more cord so there's not so much t tension up here because I don't really like the way that looks but for <clears throat> what I have right now I'll make it work what I did get is this little earring and it's like a horseshoe earring has like a little top that'll lock in place on top of the horseshoe like so and then what I'm going to do is if you see the little strap ring here and that's for your harness or your lanyard that you can put on the camera to wear over your neck. I'm going to take the cable and I'm going to actually take this little tiny earring that I found to be pretty useful and I'm going to stick it through the actual lanyard uh, link or hole I should say and loop it around to here and then I'm just going to put this earring on it like so. There we go. And once I get it on, and it, it might be a little bit tricky, but <clears throat> there we go. So now you can see it kind of holds the cable in and I can adjust the cable up or down or however, but it gives it a clean look and it kind of holds it away from this part of the gimbal right here because when you go to tilt this thing all the way down low position, the camera's gonna start swinging this way which means that when it's going this way, as you're tilting it like this and the camera's actually lifting up, it's going to bump into this part of the gimbal. So that's where this whole setup compatibility becomes a little bit tricky. <clears throat> so if you're able to get that little 90 degree um, adapter, which I will put in the description box, I'll drop a link for you guys so you can get it $7. Um, and then all you'll have to use is the adapter and the cable that come with the DJI Ronin SC already. Put it into that and it actually works. And it actually allows you to use all the functions here, including the focus wheel over here, which is kind of nifty. So <clears throat> let's get to actually balancing this now that we have everything on there. So in order to first do this, you want to work with your tilt motor, which is this one. So what I mean by your tilt is you want it to, when you unlock it, you don't want it to drop forward like so, right? You want it to just stay balanced more or less. If I, if I balance it really slowly and it goes forward, it's because it's not balanced. So what you have to do right here is you're going to take this particular switch on the bottom, loosen it, and you're going to slide the camera either forward or backwards until it actually starts balancing. So what you do is you loosen that little dial that I showed you guys will lock this into place once you actually balance it correctly so you don't forget where it sits. Loosen that and more or less pull the camera back just a hair at a time until it and don't let it go guys because if you do too much like I'm doing and you bump the table it could just slam and fall off so there it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first gently touch this part here and hold it. Twist this in place and just gently move it until it's locked securely and that'll lock this camera from sliding back and forth. And don't over uh, torque this guys and then break the little switch. Now what I'll do is I'll actually slide this little set thing all the way. Let me just show you guys kind of close. It's kind of nice to see it. But see, now that I have this quick release plate, I'm going to put that all the way up and I'm going to lock it into place. And that'll be how I can take this. And you can see it's more or less balanced on the tilt right now. Now when you're taking this off, you see what I mean guys? You're going to slide that camera off, but when you go to put it back on, it'll slide right up to that little uh, wheel there and it'll lock and stop it. And that's where you know to tighten this down and then your camera will always be where it needs to be to stay balanced. So that's how you balance the tilt is going back and forth this way. You loosen that, you slide it back and forth, then you tighten that back up once you balance it so it's not tilting forward more or less. If I put it this way, or I put it that way it should sit, or if I put it that way it should sit if you have the tilt uh, balance correct. So that's the first one. So now let's work on the roll motor. The roll motor is this guy. And if you look on the back here, there's the roll motor lock right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hit that down. And now it gives me the access for the roll. 
And actually, that's the tilt. I'm sorry, guys. Let's go back over here to the actual roll motor. I'm looking at it backwards, but there it is. So now the roll is actually able to move. So you want this camera to be able to stay more or less like that. If it was tilting this way, or if it was rolling this way, as soon as you unlock the roll motor, then the roll is off. I actually have it in place, but if it wasn't, what I would do is I would loosen this particular tilt motor knob again, and then now instead of sliding the camera back and forth, I'm gonna either slide it out this way or slide it more in this way until it balances to where the camera just sits and it's not sliding this way or it's sliding that way. Then once I have it locked and balanced right to where it sits, and you would tighten that back up, and now you have your tilt, which is this one, and your roll, which is that one. So, and uh, what you do is you just, like I said, loosen that, and then you can take this and slide it that way, or slide it this way. And the cool thing about this DJI Ronin SC is it will have this little tiny clicking device in here, which will let it click one notch at a time as you're moving it back and forth, so you're not constantly going, whoa, too far this way, or whoa, too far that way. It'll actually click, 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 until it gets just perfect where you want it. Once that's done, lock your roll motor back in place. And then also lock your, uh, your roll motor or your tilt motor too back in place. Just like that so there's nothing moving. Then we're gonna do the pan motor. Now the pan motor is this side right down here and that's the lock that you wanna unlock. Now when you check the pan motor, um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna tilt this like this. And you see how the camera is actually moving that direction instead of just staying just how I have it. If the, if the pan motor balance is right, when you lift it, it'll just stay in place. It won't move this way, it won't move that way. So you can try it both ways and just kind of go gently. Sometimes it won't move in one direction, but it moves in another. This one seems like it's almost on. But what I think I want to do in order to adjust it just a little bit more is I'm going to release the pan motor locking switch. As you can see, this rail here goes in or out. Since it's moving to the left, I want to slide the rail in just a hair. And then I'm going to try it again. Just lock it down and then simply go like this. Now look guys, it's not moving anywhere. So that was just the fine adjustment you need. So there you go. So which is cool is we just did the tilt, the roll, and the pan motor all in one little um, small amount of time. Normally you would get you know discouraged when you start seeing this, you're thinking, oh man, this is crazy. Um, you know, it's not gonna work, I'm gonna be here forever, this looks difficult, but the cool thing is is the camera balances that way uh, for, your, for your tilt and then the roll. Like I said, I'm showing you guys just one more time. As you can see, we'll sit whichever way I put it on the roll. So the roll's good. Lock that back in place. And then of course, the pan. The pan, I move it and the camera's not sliding nowhere. So the pan is actually done. Cool. So now that we got that done, let's go ahead and jump into the next uh, explanation of things that we need to do to this camera, which would be downloading the app and then actually getting the motors balanced and calibrated uh, so we can start using this bad boy. We'll be right back. Okay guys, so we want to get this thing balanced and have all the axles or the motors uh, basically configured and balanced here. So what you have to do is download the DJI Ronin app and let me just show you kind of more or less what it looks like on the screen. When you download it, it's gonna look like this. And you can see it has the different control buttons and, and uh, places you'll go into to uh, control the functionality remotely if you want on this gimbal and to uh, calibrate the motors and stuff directly through the app. So get that app uh, downloaded. I'll see if I can throw a link in the description too, but <clears throat> if you can't find it, there's a, a code right here that you can scan with your phone app and that'll take you right to the app depending on if you have an iPhone or if you're on the Android market, then you'll go to uh, different places to download that app, but get that app done ahead of time. So basically what you're gonna wanna do is unlock your tilt roll and pan motors. Get them all loose. Always unlock these guys. Don't, don't turn on the gimbal without making sure these are all on, because that can put strain on the gimbal and cause the motors to get wrecked right away. So in order to turn this gimbal on, there's a little button right here, as you guys can see. It's right on the side of the gimbal. But when you hold it, you're gonna see the lights on the front of the gimbal right here light up, going one, two, three. Once it hits three, go ahead and turn that, or let off the button. And then you can see the gimbal kind of just more or less starts to uh, get into uh, 
a straight area where more or less from where you balanced it. So you can see that the gimbal is now on, the motors are engaged, and even though I haven't balanced this yet, they're kind of already really nicely set in place. But let's go ahead and show you what it looks like to uh, take the uh, motors and get them balanced on the app. So the motor parameters is what we're gonna do and we're also gonna do a balance test. So what we're gonna do guys first is we're going to do a balance test and that's this button right here. What you're gonna do is you're gonna actually grab the uh, tripod, or not the tripod, but the gimbal right here and you're going to hit that um, balance test button. And you're gonna take the gimbal and you're gonna tilt it on a, I'm not sure exactly, a 22 degree angle according to the app. So just hit the connect button up top there where it says connect to gimbal. And then it's gonna show you the gimbal you wanna to connect to. So there's the Ronin SC, we'll hit that and it'll actually connect. And then you can see it says it's connected. So now you can go into the test and you're gonna hit it like that. And then it's gonna ask you to hold this on a 45 degree or so angle. So what you're gonna do is you're going to hold the gimbal on an angle like this until you get to a 45 degree uh, angle on the gimbal and then once you do that the gimbal will start beginning the test so let's go ahead and try that guys it's kind of hard to show you that and do it at the same time but I'm gonna hit the begin test button like I just showed you guys it's gonna show you the actual angle that you're on so you're gonna start turning the angle from 15 to 45 degrees and as you turn it on a, a angle the actual phone will show you what degrees I'm at 24 degrees right now so from 15 to 45 it says once uh, you do that, you hit begin test, and as you can see, the camera's moving, and it's moving all around, and it's, you want to keep it on that degree angle that you put it on in between 15 and 45, why it's doing this test. Hold your hand as steady as possible while it does that. Once you do that, it's going to give you the test results and see if your actual camera is balanced, and I'll show you. So here it is right here. Take a close look. It just gave me the results, and as you can see, after doing the test, it shows that the camera is excellent in all parameters. So that's the first thing you wanna do. So let me show you guys the second one. The second one is the motor parameter. And I'll show you guys right here, as you can see, it's at the top right-hand corner of the app. So you're gonna hit that button, and then it's gonna look like this. You're gonna hit that auto-tune blue bar at the bottom, once you do that, take a look at this camp, uh, this gimbal up here. I'm going to go ahead and hit it, and it's going to begin the test, and it takes maybe 30 seconds or so. <clears throat> and it'll count down on your phone as you see it wobbling there. And it'll take just a second or two for it to actually calibrate. And as you can see there, it's actually showing it calibrating the motors. Um, once it gets to 100%, you're going to feel vibrations through the gimbal. Uh, then that should be good. Uh, if there's any problems, I'm sure it'll tell you. As you can see, the tilt roll in the pan mode will be in different points of access, 24, 16, or whatever. That's just where it's balancing the, or the parameters of the motors um, <clears throat> within your setup, your specific weight of your camera or the lens or whatever you have. So once you do the balance test and set the parameters in place and do that, um, this guy is set up. From everything we showed you, from sticking it on and balancing your tilt, your roll, and your pan motors, doing your tilt test, as you can see, this camera's ready to go. So, I'm going to show you here that the joystick will actually make the camera move. So if you push it up, the camera's going to go up. If you push it down, the camera's going to go down. If you push it back up, you can set it there, or there's another quicker way to get the camera back into a level spot. And I'll show you that in a second. You can turn it to the left. You can also turn it to the right. And you can turn it straight up. Now that cable right there, like I showed you, barely gets under there. So it'll work. But it's going to hit right here just a little bit. Until I get that adapter that I was telling you about so I can eliminate the DJI adapter and only have one going into the 90 degree um, adapter into the camera. And that will give me the clearance I need to not even touch that. But for now it works. So on this camera, you'll notice that there's a trigger right here in the front. So if you look there, that's the trigger. And this is actually going to lock the camera in place. And what I mean is if you see right now, I'm going to fold these down and now it's ready to go. If you look up this way and get a good shot there, you can see that the camera will actually tilt down as I tilt it down or it'll tilt back. 
But if I want the camera to stay directly level while I'm tilting, then I'm gonna have to hold this trigger in while I'm doing it. So I can hold it there, looking at you guys, hold the trigger in, and now look, as I go down, the actual gimbal will stay in place. It doesn't matter if I go sideways, if I go this way, or I can even go backwards like so. But if I get it into a position like this where it's not straight anymore, or say like I'm doing it like this, and now look, it's all off, I can simply click this trigger twice and it'll set it back into where it should be. One, two, and there it is, it's level again. Now notice the pivot right here on the pan motor. So when I'm turning this camera to go this way, I don't wanna just turn the whole camera like this. I can, but that kind of gives it like a draggy effect. You're gonna turn this and it's going to actually swing the camera with smooth motion back and forth. I'm not gonna go into all details of this, but we will show you guys some examples of this gimbal. On, uh, we'll probably pull out the Beastar UTV and uh, do some shots with this gimbal, driving in it over some whoops or something like that so we can see how this gimbal holds up. But more or less, it's in place and look how fast it reacts. I mean, if I hold it like that with the trigger, it's gonna actually do the dance, you know what I'm saying? Mm, mm, mm. There it is. And then I can just hit the double trigger to make it go back into place and bam, it's back straight. Now, if I wanna do selfie mode, I can actually just leave that folded down. I'm gonna click this three times, one, two, three. And now the gimbal will change over to selfie mode and now I can actually hold the trigger in and kind of move it down like this if I wanna get low or if I wanna get close. And if I want it to be straight, I just click it twice and it'll go back straight again. So I'm not doing selfie mode anymore. So those are some of the basic features of this gimbal once you get it set up. And at any point in time, you can jump on that trigger. And if you ever just leave it out of place and you don't wanna put it back with the trigger, you just click that trigger twice down there and bam. And I keep saying trigger over here, but your joystick. If you ever don't wanna to have to put it back in place with a joystick, cause it takes a minute, if you just click that trigger twice, it does it for you. Comes back quick. So from what you guys can see right now, um, this guy is completely balanced and ready to go. Really neat camera, lightweight. This is a mirrorless camera, the M50 Mark II. Fits on there beautifully. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add this couple accessories that I had on here at the beginning. I wanted to show you what it looked like with them on, but I also want to show you what this looks like when it comes right out of the box, which is bare with these safety plates on. Um, so we're gonna put the focus wheel on here. And what I'm gonna do is if you click the power button, you can see there's three different controllers on here. And you can use um, different um, persons. It's like different uh, profiles. You have one, two, and three. So you can go and change the settings on this particular Ronin and uh, set it up for user profile number two, which puts their types of settings and whatever camera they're using into place. So you don't have to keep setting it up every time you switch from one camera to another. You might be using a random DSLR, which we're gonna show you on this too, or uh, you might be using a smaller mirrorless and you wanna switch back to that profile, but you have three of them. I'm not gonna get into detail because I'm not gonna go full detail on this video. I'm just giving you some basic functions on here so you can get started. Sport mode, you have an M here. You can use the sport mode if you're filming a basketball player and you're out there on the court or someone on the football field and you're running with them and you're moving and you want this, this gimbal to react faster, you can put it in the sport mode. There's some other functionalities about sport mode that I'm not gonna get into, but just read your pamphlet. Um, and there's plenty of other videos where they actually do get into some of these features a little more in depth. I'm just kind of showing you guys this setup because I noticed out there there's not a lot of M50 Mark IIs or Mark Ones showing some of the issues that they're having with uh, getting these cables to fit and um, being able to use this focus wheel versus not and do you even need this focus wheel. So the great thing about this M50 is, is it actually <clears throat> has um, autofocus, which is, seems to be from what the ratings are showing in reviews that this is one of the better cameras with a better autofocus. So depending on the function you have it in, you may want to use the focus wheel and do it manually, uh, especially if you're doing pictures, this might come in a little bit handier. Um, otherwise, this M50 seems to focus really decently. There may be a point where you're trying to focus, autofocus, and you're just not liking it. You can just grab the wheel and take over and change the focus. I'm gonna show you how this goes. First, I'm gonna put it in the limp mode because I don't wanna drain the battery and I don't wanna leave the motors engaged. So if you just take the power button and hit it one time, what it does is it goes into limp mode and you'll start seeing this uh, light right here flashing slowly. That means it's in limp mode and you can see the motors are just sitting 
freely again. So it's kind of like sleep mode, limp mode, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that keeps it on but not engaged so you don't ruin the motors while you're doing other things and moving your camera around manually. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and get this little plate off here because <clears throat> I wanted to show you how this installs. So let's go ahead and focus on the focus wheel. So just take the two screws out guys and you can see there's one more there. Spin it out. There it is. I know that could be exhausting watching. This uh, particular setup comes with these screws that you can see that I already put two in there. The cool thing with everything on this gimbal is that once you screw the screw in, it kind of just sits in and rests in between the thread uh, in the back of this so the screws don't fall out uh, every time. So let's go ahead and mount this. What you're gonna do is you're just going to take this mounting wheel and you're gonna line it up. You wanna use the bigger Allen wrench until you get your screws inside the holes there. Just start one at a time, then do the other one slowly. As you can see, the switch is actually now threading on. And you'll notice <clears throat> on this particular focus wheel switch, it's blinking red. So some people were told that, and I've seen it in some other reviews of this, that uh, you would have to set this up and program this focus wheel to your camera. That may be the case for some of you guys. Um, for us, it's not. I noticed when I put this focus wheel and installed it, and I turned on the camera and the Ronin SC, um, the first time I got an error message, it said ERR70, and it said to just turn off the camera and turn it back on, or possibly take the battery out and reinstall it. So I did, and then all of a sudden, the light on here turned green, and the camera functions uh, showed on the screen like it should, and I was able to hit the record button, and it actually turned the camera on. So. So I don't know if that's just how it, it syncs up, but it kind of auto synced, guys. I didn't have to do nothing special. So I'm going to turn this camera back on. So real quick, I wanted to show you the battery to interrupt that scene, but let's go ahead and jump into it anyway. So as you can see, the panel opens. The battery will still fit into the camera with that particular bracket on. You just got to kind of push it in like that and it'll lock into place. Take your little micro SD card, stick that bad boy in there too, like so. And guys, just take your time with it. Don't force it in there. If it's not sliding in right away, then turn it around the other way and just try it until you get it. And then it'll just kind of pop in like that. Now you have everything in place. <clears throat> and I have the gimbal in limp mode or whatever you want to call it, sleep mode, just for the moment while I put this back on. And I wanted to show you guys that so you could see what I was talking about. So then I can just lock it back in place real quick. Plug it back in on the camera, which only takes a second. There we go. And I can more or less just turn it off sleep mode, which when I hit the button, you'll see the camera move itself. So there it is, it's off sleep mode. And now look, see the focus wheel has actually linked up correctly. <clears throat> now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over here and show you guys again. We're going to open this up and I know this isn't always the greatest view, but let's just get this set up. Let's open this up and I can actually turn limp mode on again just for a split second while I open this because you guys don't want to be moving this camera and pushing buttons while the, the motors are engaged on the gimbal because it could actually cause some problems. So <clears throat> get it turned on, take it back out of limp mode. There you go. Now you can see that the camera's on. are so if you pay attention to the actual screen there you can see and I'll move it up a little bit closer just so we can see what we're looking at here but like I said it's not healthy to move that when it's on the gimbal but you can see it has the record button and some different functions right there there's a better view uh, so <clears throat> you have the Q button which brings up your menus and then you have your record button. So you can manually touch that and it'll record. Or if you look down here, you can actually see that trigger. I don't know if I can focus right. Let me get back a little bit. There we go. That's a little better. But you can see right here this trigger. Um, I can still engage or I can actually just hit the button right there. So I'm going to hit the button on that. But I want to show you guys the screen here. So you can see that it actually works. So here we go, I'm gonna hit the button, it should say record. And there it is, so it says record. 
So there you go. So now you can see that this particular setup of wiring, which comes down like that, comes down to the bottom and hooks in, actually works for the recording and it's still recording and I can hit the button again and bam, it stops. So, now you guys know for sure that this M50 is working. Uh, the microphone settings and, uh, and whatnot in here for this particular setup are a little bit different than what comes stock when you plug it all in. I've changed a few settings and I can probably go over that with you guys. But now we've got the camera more or less set up. You see that it's plugged in, the recording part's going, the gimbal functionality is ready to go. And if you look at this particular view, you can see the back counter over there with the old antiques. Um, I can take the gimbal wheel, the focus wheel that we just put on, and I can move it, and you can see that it kind of makes it blurry. There's blurriness. There's really blurry. But then, see the camera is actually trying to focus when it goes out of focus over here, so. But you can see that it blurs up, and it's because I'm moving the focus wheel and fine focusing from right down there at that point, just moving this back and forth. That'll actually change the auto, the focus on here. You can go in and change the focus on your camera to manual focus if you don't want the autofocus function being used. And then you can really just take control of it with your wheel. And uh, I, th I find that to be a little more difficult because, you know, it's, it's easy to forget scenes and your focusing points when you're thinking about 10 other things. If the camera's really built that well and you're able to actually just use the autofocus, I would do that. Okay guys, so we're going to talk about a couple other things on this uh, gimbal that are some basic functions. Um, they have the track mode, which you can put the uh, your phone on the top of this camera, get rid of the microphone. You can actually mount the microphone down here if you want. Um, and then you would mount the camera on here and the tracking mode, the self-tracking mode, would actually have the gimbal follow you. So if you don't have a cameraman, you can put the camera uh, in the tracking mode on the app, mount your phone above the camera, and the camera will actually move the gimbal and track you as you're moving, which allows it to be able to ha kind of have a, 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 a video man without actually having a video man, which works out great if you're filming by yourself. So, um, Or you could be displaying something or grabbing a scene of someone driving by and you want the camera to just actually go into that mode. Uh, you can actually hold the gimbal while it's doing that too and just hold the gimbal and move it and it'll actually still continue to move and track that person. So what you want to do is remove this plate right over here with the uh, Allen wrenches that come with this setup. Uh, these little plates come right off. And as you can see there's an electronic panel on the inside. So you can put your focus wheel on this side or you can put the focus wheel on the other side. However you do it um, allows you to be able to electronically use everything, whether it's on one side or the other. So I'm going to take that off. I'm going to mount this. Now, <clears throat> what I found um, to be useful with this particular accessory that comes in this package is you can take this little mount off here. Off of here, you just got to kind of loosen the wheel a little bit. There we go. So. That comes off right there and you can mount this right here first and then put this back on and mount it on there. Or you can actually take your wheel, your focus wheel, move it onto this side. Then you can put this accessory onto this side and you can take your microphone off the top of your camera, mount it down here if you're going to be holding the camera really low, the gimbal, to get those low shots to keep the cable from obstructing or the microphone from hitting the top of the frame of the gimbal. So that's kind of a cool idea. Um, like I said, move this on this side, put it over there, depending on which side of your camera the microphone port is on. Mine is on the side that the Ronin focus wheel sits on, so I would actually move the wheel over here, put that there, and then mount my, uh, my uh, microphone onto that. So, <clears throat> so what you want to do is just take this, and you can unscrew that little bracket off of this comes with screws already guys, it's the silver screws that come in the bag. I think they give you four. I used two already for the focus wheel, and now I'm using two more for the phone adapter bracket here. So basically you're just going to take this in and screw it into there like so. Get it started, then grab your next bolt. And I know that this video is kind of a longer one, but <clears throat> it's got some valuable information for people who are just now using this or maybe one of you guys have had this and didn't realize you could actually utilize something 
Now this has a, a wheel with a screw that's going to actually go into the hole there. So if you want to focus in on there and look, you can see that right there. That's going to sit in there and you're just going to spin the wheel. Once it starts going, there's these two little knobs. If you look real closely, you can see them. There's one little knob too. As you're tightening this up, make sure those two little knobs fit in the place that they should fit in. So if you don't do that right, then you're going to have uh, this wheel moving around on you and it can be a pain in the butt. So find them wherever they're sitting on, on here and then tighten it down. And then we'll be able to mount this on next. All right, so I'll just slip right on the here like so. I'm going one way. If it doesn't go, turn it over this way and then start from that side. Then you're just gonna take that wheel and lock it on. And now your camera and your gimbal and your phone and everything are set up to be able to sit on there. So now I can take my phone and move it on over here, which makes it handy because as I'm doing everything, guys, moving it back, as you can see, they made sure that the gimbal doesn't touch the phone where it sits, no matter what you're doing. So I can come up this way, I can come up that way. And if this is moving around, just tighten the little arm right here and that'll keep it from moving and swinging back and forth like that. Uh, one, two, gets that straight. Then I can access the app on here. <clears throat> and I can uh, take this phone and do different things with it, which makes it handy. But essentially when we're doing the self-tracking mode, you're gonna take this phone and mount this bracket on top of the camera. In order to do that though, if you take off this microphone and stuff and you put this onto there, you're gonna to have to rebalance the camera because it's gonna be heavier now and a different weight. So you're gonna to have to readjust your tilt, your roll, and your pan possibly and then just calibrate the motor one more time, which only takes a second on the app. So keep that in mind if you're doing that, and that could be a pain in the butt depending on what you're doing and where you're filming, having to move the microphone off and put this on if you don't have a cameraman. But hey, it makes for a great clip and a great video um, when you have that opportunity. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually, why I have this, I'm going to take the phone off of this mount. I'm going to access the app and I'm going to show you guys again on the camera. So a cool little function on here is you can hit create and you can go to focus mobile. And uh, if you see this enable force mobile switch right there, it's not highlighted. But if you hit that, I can now, as you can see the camera, go ahead and focus on that camera now. As you can see, when I tilt this, and essentially I would be that way, it'll actually follow and if I had the phone turned around the other way like this, now if I was facing behind the camera and I turned it on, it actually follows the movement of your phone exactly. So this could be great guys if you were doing a video. And if you want to recenter it, you can hit, you can turn that off. Right there you would just turn off that so it stops moving your phone like so or your camera. And then hit recenter. And as you can see the camera just recentered back to itself so <clears throat> at that point uh, the camera is facing the correct va value and the correct way um, I can go ahead and uh, hit the record button from right here but to make this fair let me sit in front here and show you guys if I was actually holding this and you're probably wondering what, what type of mode that would be useful for but I could turn this on and if I was coming down and I was like holding this and I wanted to just turn it down and just and I'm watching something like in a river go by and I want that smooth movement and then I want it to go up I can just hold the gimbal and do that now it's gonna keep moving as I move the gimbal or as I move my phone so no matter what it's gonna stay and that's kind of a cool mode guys look at that just back back bam and it moves fast depending on the speed It'll move quick, so I'm going to disengage that so it quits moving. And I'm going to hit the recenter button on the front of there. And there it is, it's recentered. And I can actually hit the record button on the phone or on the app right there to make this turn on and record. You just got to make sure the camera's on and you have your cable plugged in. And you can move that, hit record, it'll record. And actually, I'll just turn it on. And I'll even. Yep. Sure as heck works. Let's check it out, guys. I know this video is a little wobbly because we're back and forth, but check it out. So we'll try to get up to both screens at the same time. Now, when I turn this on, 
it'll actually move the camera like I said and if I want to record I can just hit the button so when I hit this kind of watch there at the same time there it is records on now it's recording everything I'm doing so that's how that function works I can hit stop I can turn that off so the phone will quit moving with the, ca the camera or vice versa and then I can just hit recenter and get that back and then I can get out of that mode and I can go into time-lapse panorama mode uh, camera settings I can set camera settings from here you can go in there and uh, focus speed um, different settings that you can actually program in there. there's even game gaming controller settings so I can take a controller like a play a PlayStation controller and sync it up to there and actually use that to control this instead of my phone tilting it like I showed you since we don't have a controller and we're not doing that, um, we'll leave that alone. Virtual joystick mode. <clears throat> so for this mode, as you can see, I can just take this and move it and it changes the camera the way it's moving. So no matter how I hold it up and down, I can just do that smooth panning mode, whichever way to get it to film if I don't want to be right up moving the gimbal myself. Then when I'm done, I can just hit recenter, puts it back and again, as you can see right there, record works from the app. So that makes it cool for being able to control this camera at every period and point why it's on the gimbal. Um, Active Track, when we get into that, I'll show it to you, it's right there on the app, but it's all under the Create mode, which is right here, Create, and there's where all your functions are for that. So if you're not using the Create and you're either doing the motor parameter or the balancing test, you can look at the status and then you can create your user profile from here for for the profile number two and three on there. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this up and balance it. We won't show you guys right away because we've already showed you how to balance it regardless of what you're putting on there. All right guys, so active track is cool. You gotta take the camera, take any accessories you have on the top, put your phone up there with the uh, provided camera mount by uh, Ronin SC. And uh, once you do that, you can go ahead and log into the app and then go to the active track um, function. Hit that, put it on your camera, and as you can see when I move, so does the camera. I'm just doing it slowly and trying to go this way a little bit. You notice if I'm moving this way, the camera's moving with me and it's just tracking me, which this is a cool, cool function. So if I'm going like this, as you can see, I'm standing up and look, it just aligns. Now if I want to sit down, it's going to keep an eye on my face and track my eyes. Now look at it. There it goes. It can be a little bit jittery, you know, when you have wireless connections to apps and cameras. But for the most part, it really actually moves. And you can set how fast you want it to pan. You can put the fast, medium, or slow. And what that does is it'll allow the camera to move faster or slower depending on what you're wanting it to track and move. But check that out. And then I can plug in my cable from my uh, camera to my gimbal and then just hit record and then it's recording as well. So you got to have the cable plugged in in order to actually record. Otherwise you don't need the cable in order to put the camera and the phone together to use the AccuTrack function. So there it is. It works. As you can see it moves along and tracks me. I walk over here, it's moving with me, as you can see. Now look at the camera too, as it's moving with me. It's tracking my face, just like that. So there it is, I wanted to show you guys, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I did want to show you that this is pretty awesome for those guys, and I'm kind of moving slow just so you can see how nice and smooth it pans. So that's the active track. that's how it works. Uh, hopefully if uh, you guys are independent filmers and don't have a lot of help, this function will work great for you. Guys, so we've gone ahead and showed you pretty much all the functions, the active track, the uh, actual panning with your phone uh, function on there. We've showed you how to set it up, balance it. We've showed you some of the complications with the connections and some of the adapters and things you'll need. So I want to talk about using a standard DSLR camera versus using a actual mirrorless camera which is more small in, in size and weight. As you can see, I have this gigantic Rogue mic on here, but it actually, I've used this from plenty of my videos to set up, and it's come out great. The great news about this Ronin and using a standard DSLR um, is it'll actually fit on there. You don't even need the riser plate still. You can just use the standard quick release plate, and you can mount this on there. What I found, though, because of my setup, I just take off this um, external Rogue mic off my camera, and I actually stick it down here 
and I can mount it inside of my mount here. It's one way or the other. One of these sides. There you go. And once I mount it, and I actually, guys, I actually take this mount and I swap sides with the actual Ronin wheel, and I put the Ronin wheel over here because my external camera port's there. So then I can just take the camera, uh, the microphone, and put plug it right into the camera on that side. So if I swapped those attachments and put this one over here, I could actually just plug that in there. And then look, I would I would have the actual external mic on there instead of using this one. Um, if I'm using the DSLR, because with this big boy on here, you're definitely not going to be able to take your um, gimbal and turn it all the way down in this angle without this big old mic hitting the top of your gimbal on it. So <clears throat> that's where being able to mount it on the side works. And that little piece that comes for the actual phone mount, it actually is for that, actually works the same for the, the uh, microphone, the external microphones. So there's different ways and different setups you can do this. It just depends on what you're filming with and what you want to use. Do you want to use a big mic? Do you want to use a smaller little mic? This one actually has a good little shock absorber. You can see it moves. This one doesn't really move, so that shock absorber is not as good as this one <clears throat> for the sound. But here's the difference between using a mirrorless and a DSLR camera that is not on the compatibility list. And I'm going to just turn this to limp mode there. Let it turn off for a second so I don't waste the battery. But you can see it just kind of goes into its own little lymph mode. And when I hit the button again, it'll straighten back up. But So if I wanted to not use this mirrorless and I wanted to use my standard DSLR camera, um, or I just needed a gimbal, but I'm not planning on upgrading to a mirrorless camera and I want to use what I have, here's a T7 um, camera. And it's a DSLR Canon as well. And this is one of the first ones I... This is actually my second camera. I started using a little Nikon, a Nikon. It was like a little Coolpix camera. And uh, I went from that to this DSLR camera I got from Best Buy. And I actually like this. It has all the functions, flash, everything. I won't get into that. But this fits on here. I can actually mount this on there, balance it, and it will work for this particular camera. What doesn't work is the actual control functions that are on the front here. So if I wanted to hit the record button, and plug the wire from this camera into the gimbal, it's not compatible as far as the software and the control functions won't link up. So that's where it's not compatible. Um, I even brought an adapter so I could actually use the old, uh, there's a micro USB on this one, it's not even, and that's actually the mini USB port, not even the micro. So this camera has an older port on it. Um, I got the adapter, I plugged it into the Ronin, and it would not sync up at all. I couldn't hit the record button on here and have it turn on there. I had to do it manually. So that's the downfall, guys, of using a regular DSLR camera that is not on the compatibility list for the DJI website. Uh, go check that out. Uh, see if I can get a link in the description as well in case you're trying to find that. See if it'll work with your guys' camera. Um, I was planning on upgrading anyway, so I did go get this M50. And uh, I'm glad I did. It's a smaller camera, more compact, mirrorless, has 4K. Um, the only thing with 4K on this, guys, and I'll just tell you offhand, I don't need to show you, is uh, auto, um, autofocus on this one is uh, definitely um, something that's not going to work with 4K mode on this. So if you're trying to use autofocus, um, don't plan on using 4K. Um, otherwise, you're going to use your manual focus. Um, that's the only downfall about that. This one doesn't have 4K, so I couldn't use that anyways. I can get up to 60 frames per second on this guy, but... Um, to slow slow it down and you know it's got auto uh, auto focus on it too but since I can't link up the wiring to it I'm not going to get anywhere further than just using the actual gimbal motion with this so I'm not going to go any further into this I don't want this video to go for days but I did want to cover some valuable points that I found out um, you may have seen this gimbal and you're like I really want that but I don't have the camera that shows that's on the compatibility list as long as you're within the weight that's the biggest thing. I think this is four or five pounds. Uh, don't quote me on it, but you can check the instructions or the stats on it. Um, so as long as the camera is not overweight, you can still mount it onto this gimbal and use it for your standard DSL. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and get this video um, on its way out. We're going to jump into some clips of showing this gimbal um, being used and the type of footage it produces over some bumpy areas and stuff. And then we'll go ahead and hit our outro. Like that.
we made it to the end of the video, guys. Thanks for sticking around to this long video. I know it was uh, a little bit longer than expected, but there was a lot of products and a lot of information we were trying to give you guys uh, suggestions on regarding this uh, Canon M50 Mark II as far as its compatibility to the Ronin SC. Um, I just want to thank you guys also for uh, subscribing if you are a subscriber and if you're not a subscriber please consider uh, subscribing. We're almost to our milestone, 1,000 uh, subscribers, we're getting that way. Um, we're almost close to it so I want to keep pushing for that. Uh, one last product here guys, we do have an extra battery pack we picked up on Amazon. Um, this battery pack is for the M50 Mark II, it comes with a dual charging um, box and two batteries for $23 and uh, there's a lot of great reviews on this battery so apparently it works well with this so that way you guys have some extra batteries um, there is going to be another future video coming up here soon I'm not going to tell you what it is keep tuned into the channel if you're just now tuning into the channel and you've never seen any of the other videos on this channel except for the one today uh, check out some links I'll throw some more of those in the description box with some product relevance uh, to other videos we've done um, and then there's other things we do too guys installs and whatnot um, vacation spots destinations we do a little bit of everything so if it's your first time appreciate you guys uh, checking it out check out those other videos for now we're gonna go ahead and drop the ball and end this uh, appreciate you guys checking out review it TV and we'll see you guys next time